Hey there, I'm Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now I've done some videos about how CPUs work and I'll leave a link to the playlist here in the description below where I've talked about the fundamentals of what goes on inside of a CPU and we've also done a video about assembly language. We wrote a program in assembly for the Raspberry Pi so we could see how that works. But if you want to become an expert in something, you need to actually do it yourself. If you want to speak a foreign language, you need to actually not just learn it from a book, you need to start speaking it. If you want to learn how to fix cars, you can read all the theory, but you need to get your hands dirty and start fixing the car. So the best way for us to truly understand how a CPU works is to design our own CPU. Now that may sound like a bit of a lofty idea, and, and perhaps it is, but by using software to emulate the CPU, we can actually build a CPU model quite quickly. So to do this, we want to look at three things, and it's gonna be three videos. The first video, we're gonna define an instruction set for our new CPU. In the second video, we're gonna write an assembler that can take the kind of the mnemonics that we need to write programs and convert them into machine code. And in the third video, we're going to actually take that machine code and run it inside of a CPU emulator so we can see how the whole thing sticks together. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so let's get cracking with my and of course this is sarcastic, amazing instruction set architecture. It of course is very simple, but it will show us the very basics of what it means to design an instruction set for a CPU. So first of all, we're gonna make some assumptions. We can design this however we want to. I've made some assumptions that will make it easier for us to do this at the beginning. The first is it's a 16-bit architecture. Obviously today we've used to 32-bit and of course now 64-bit architectures. We're dealing with much, much longer numbers. When you want to conceptualize how this is, it's very easy to see everything in 16 bits, which means we can address up to 64K of memory and we can load values into registers that are 16 bits, so up to 65,535. Okay, so that's one. Now you could design a 32-bit one if you wanted to, you could design a 64-bit one if you wanted to, but here it makes it easier. Now, because we're dealing with 16 bits, then actually that makes it easy if we make the instructions 32 bits. Why is that? Because in an instruction you want to have the data or the address that you're actually dealing with plus some information about operation codes, op codes, about what you're going to do with those things. So when you do it like that, 16 bits for data, 16 bits for telling the CPU what you're going to do, it makes it easy to do it 32 bits. That's four bytes. So every instruction starts on a four byte boundary. And this is going to kind of be a risk type architecture, which means that you don't do any direct uh, operations on memory. So you can't say add one to the contents of memory address one, two, three, four. You have to load it in from memory into the register, add one to it, and then write it back out to the memory. Okay, so the first byte of our four bytes, because it's a 32-bit instruction, is going to be the op code, and that tells you what the operation does. The second byte will tell you on which register it's working against. The third and the fourth byte are the data or the address. So here are some example opcodes, zero, we can start at zero, is load, load something into a register. Uh, I've chosen 16, which in hexadecimal is uh, 0x10. That's when you want to store things from a register to memory. And then I've gone with 32, which is 0x20 for when I want to compare two things. Branch is 0x30 and so on. And when we're dealing with registers, register one is one, register two is two, register three is three, so a really, really simple way of naming the registers. So to load something into register two, here would be the opcode for us, look at that, zero, uh, zero, zero, because it's load, and zero, two, because it's register two. So those two bytes together say load something into register two. And now if we take 65535, 65535 in decimal is 0xFFFF in hexadecimal. So that's the full amount of 16 bytes there. So to load 65535 into register 2, you get this 0002FFFF. And what that is here is 00 is load. We know that. Uh, 002 is registered 2, and then 65535 is 
these two here, FF, FF. So it's four bytes in total, one, two, three, four, and that is an instruction. So when our CPU sees those four bytes together, it will load the value 65,535 into register two, and that's the way it works. So if we have chosen a zero to be loading a value, like 65,535, then we can say zero one, this is a new opcode now, opcode zero one can be load from another register. So to load R3 with the contents of R6, so to load into register three what's already in register six, it becomes this, uh, zero one, because it's not zero zero now, because we're now doing a register load. There's the three, that's register three. This one isn't used and this is a register six. We can look at that like this. One is load, three is three, zero here is not used. In fact, there could be any value in there. Our CPU will just ignore it. And then six means from register six. So there's another four bytes for us. Now, if that was an instruction that our CPU saw, it would know to load whatever was in R6 into R3. And finally, another type of load is to load the contents of a memory address into a register. So we've had 0, 0, we've had 0, 1, so the next one logically is 0, 2. Of course, we could put any we like in here. I'm just, we're just making these up as I go along. Here we could put 22 if we want to, but of course, you want some logic to it. You want it to flow. You want it to be understandable. So we'll just go, the next load instruction is 2. So load R3 with the content of the address A, B, C, D. And I've just used that one because it's easy to see. A, B, C, D could be any address between 0, 0, 0, 0 and F, 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 F. Okay, that is... 0, 2, that's the opcode, into register 3, and then here is our 16 bits, because it's a 16-bit architecture, A, B, C, D. So there is another op for bytes, an instruction, that if our CPU saw it, it would know to load into register 3, the whatever is in memory at address A, B, C, D. And now we've done that with load, we need to do that again with all the other instructions. We need to rinse, spin, and repeat. So now we can move on to other instructions. So for example, we could do store, and here I've defined some store instructions. Uh, 101112, store the contents of a register into the memory at the uh, 16 bits that are given. Because it's a 16-bit architecture, we might want to deal with just eight bits at a time. And so there's two more red store address uh, operations here for the high part of the 16 bits or the low part of the 16 bits. We can compare register with register. So what is in R1, is it the same as what's in R2? And that will have opcode 20. We compare a register with a value. So is what is in R7 equal to zero or not? And that would be opcode 21. And then of course we want to branch. So we can branch if the compare was equal. We do that with 30. If it was greater than is a 3, 1. If it's less than it's 3, 2. Branch always. Just branch off to another part of memory is going to be 3, 3. And I've just I've labeled these 30313233 because I want it. When you design your own CPU architecture, you can put whatever opcodes in here that you like. So I've added in a few more. We've got some add and we've got some subtracts, a value from a register, a register from a register. So take away one from whatever is in register five, or sorry, add one to register five, or add uh, what is in register five to register six. And the same for uh, subtraction. And again, 40424143, uh, and I've defined them there. And then I've got two more miscellaneous instructions, no op, which literally does nothing. And that's good for just filling things in, particularly when I was testing the code to want to make sure that it branched to the right place. I could just put in some no op operations that do nothing. And so it just moves it down further in the memory. So I can see that I've jumped to another place in memory and that's uh, FF, 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 and then halt, which will cause the CPU just to stop is opcode FE. So I've said, well, if you put in FE, FF, FE, FF, then that will give you, the CPU will halt. And that gives us this very tiny table here of the things that are in our uh, CPU instruction architecture. We've got load instructions here. We've got store instructions here. And here are all the opcodes. Here is what the second byte is meant to be. And here is what bytes three and four are meant to be. Here's the compare, here's the branch, and so on. So there is a little table of the instructions. Now with those instructions like that, you can actually write a little program that will loop around, it will write addresses, it will read from addresses, it will do some adding and subtraction, it will compare, and it can loop. So you can actually get a very simple program running in just those number of instructions. So of course there's lots missing, there's no multiply, there's no divide, there's no 
idea at all of the carry, what happens when you add something to a number and it goes beyond 16 bits. There's no shift operations, there's no and, there's no or, there's no XOR, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's missing. There's no ideas yet of subroutines where you can branch off and then return to where you were. I've done nothing to do with a stack. We can't push things on a stack or return things from a stack. We can't clear any of the flags that are set when you do a comparison. We'll talk more about this when we come to look at the implementation of the CPU. So there's so much more you can do, but this just gives you this initial taster of what uh, what you can do in the very first round of defining your instruction set. So part two now is to build an assembler. I've done that in uh, Python. So it takes uh, an, an assembly mnemonics that we're going to define that says load, store, compare, branch, and we can define that however we want, and it converts it into those instructions. So whenever it sees a load into register one, however we've defined that in kind of a simple programming language, it will create 0001, whatever is the correct uh, opcode that we've just defined. And then we need to write a CPU. This assembler will produce a binary, and this CPU loads that binary into memory and starts executing those codes. And I've also done that in Python, so we can see how you can emulate the CPU. So there's two more videos to come, build the assembler and emulate the CPU. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and please subscribe. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.